bit of a different one today. We're going to be flying more than 400 feet above the ground. Now we're going to be able to do this without any special permission from the CAA, without any special authorization, uh, perfectly legally. So this video really demonstrates what the legal height is to fly, how you work that out, and what the caveats are around that, and how you can actually fly higher than 400 foot completely illegally. So if that interests you, this is the video for you. If you hadn't worked it out already, we'd be flying off of a cliff. Now, I'm going to keep away from cliffs because, firstly, I'm scared of heights. Secondly, I don't want to die. So let's not get too close. But I'm down at Beachy Head and we are going to fly off the cliff. Just to complicate things. Now this is a triple SI uh, and there are peregrine falcons that live and nest around here. So I'm not going to linger around the cliffs because I do not want to disturb wildlife. We are kind of getting into nesting season now. Wow, a view. So that's the first thing to remember. I'm not going to disturb wildlife. I'm hoping I'm going to see the lighthouse in a minute, which will be just over there. So I'm going to walk a bit more further up the hill because I don't want to get too close to this edge of this cliff. There's lots of people around as well, so that's a consideration. Also here it's quite windy. So around cliffs and big buildings, you've got to be aware of updrafts because the wind, wind will hit the cliff potentially and the air will be pushed straight up so you don't really want to be hanging around tops of cliffs very much for not only birds but also for the updrafts that could blow the drone away. So the wind is probably, I mean, I've been flying all day so I've not really had an issue with the wind, it is a bit higher here. I can't see. <laughs> I will not risk my safety just to see something, as in just to see a view. I am not a risk taker. Not like that. And to run the same with drones, I won't risk. I don't want to risk losing it or putting other people in danger. It's just not worth it. So if you did, let's take okay, let's look at what you did if you did do that. If you flew above 400 feet, you could most likely are oh, breaking the air navigation order for which there's potentially a prison sentence so it's just not worth it not only that if you were to hit say manned aviation oh it's so windy then it might not just be uh, breaking the air navigation order, you could be held up for manslaughter if somebody died. So, and of course you never know where or when manned aviation might be. So generally it's just not worth the risk. If you can't see your drone, if you're flying about 400 feet, chances are you can't see the drone. Is it worth the risk? flying above 400 feet an aeroplane and helicopter coming around the corner or coming across the sky quite low and you not being able to see if you've got to go up or down to avoid that plane you would be immediately wouldn't know what to do the plane won't see your drone You can't avoid it because you can't see it either. So that's, that's the other thing, actually. When I go above this cliff, I can't fully go down the side because I won't be able to see it. So I'm limited with what I can do because I've got to keep VLOS. So the chances are, I'm gonna get the shot. Go up, get the shot I want. Not go very far, come back down. This is not gonna be a long flight. 
I'm going to check the wind as well because it is very windy. I'm hoping I might get a view here. I want to see the lighthouse, that's what I want to see. So pretty much we're at Beachy Head now. I think this is the top of it here. Look at that through there. Right, it's still nothing. Nearly at the top. Handily, I don't know if it's uh, National Trust or who it is, but they've closed all the car parks right near it, so you've got to walk for half a mile. I've got to say, my feet are like jelly at the moment. So finally we got to the top, I did my pre-flight checks, checked the wind and away we went. I dropped below the height of the cliffs, uh, took a couple of pictures, and now I'm moving at oh, about 14 meters above the height which I took off at, but I'm, which must make me about 500 feet above the ground surface, but I'm 30 feet from the cliff edge. In a moment, we're gonna explain exactly how I'm doing this legally. I'm 250 meters out, I can still see Got good visual line of sight. I'm gonna stop there for a minute and I'm gonna change the camera. It's good to have your settings set up so you don't actually have to faff about with it when you're trying to keep an eye on your drone. Right, I'm gonna come back in. Right, I'm going to go back down there a little bit and get some views going the other way, coming this way, because the sun, I'm going to put it into the sun. So, in simple terms, you can fly 400 feet above the top of the cliff, above the cliff edge, like we are here. Now, immediately you move out beyond the cliff, you're going to be in excess of 400 feet above the ground but that's okay because you need to be 400 feet from the closest point of the earth. So if you imagine a radius from the corner of the cliff that runs a quarter of a circle, and then you're gonna run down the side of the cliff, as long as you're 400 feet from that, it's fine. Once you get to the lower part of the cliff, you then, the closest point is gonna be the sea below you. Again, you can fly 400 feet above that. So you've been given a line there really where you can fly within and a line where you would be illegal flying out the other side. All right, what's the other way you can fly 400 feet, more than 400 foot? And I've seen this done incorrectly. Very windy. So the other way to do it, if somebody has asked you to inspect their building or given you permission from the building to fly and do some photographs of it or inspect it, you can fly within 50 meters horizontally and above it 15 meters. So for instance, if you, if the owners of Blackpool Tower came and spoke to you and said, right, I want you to inspect this pinnacle on the top, you can go and do that within 15 meters. What you can't do, it's just going to fly up next to the building without any permission. If that was higher than 400 feet. Because then you'd be breaking the law. I'm back to square one. Oh. 
So if you're unsure about if the wind is too strong enough, it's too strong or not, take off, give yourself <coughs> fly into the wind. So if you have to land, you can go and pick it up as well. So don't bother flying into the wind when it is uh, out to sea, but uh, fly into the wind. Fly, I don't know, five meters up, 10 meters up, see how it, how it goes. If you get a strong wind warning, bring it back. If you don't, you can take it a little bit more. So you do a little test flight for a couple of minutes, but of course, just because you don't get any wind on that particular flight, you might get a gust that is three times stronger. You don't know, you might get a road gust that might just take your drone away. You never know what it's gonna do. So, oh, I wish I got around this headland. I might have another go here in a minute. There is the lighthouse. So that's what I had in my shot. That's what I want you to see. But, here looks like another great spot for a minute. The sky looks amazing. Let's see what we can do. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up. There's plenty more content like this on the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.